Excuse me, little dog. <sighs> Hi, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day. Here in the caterpillar invasion of planet Earth, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, it is now. The sun is going down over Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022, as the insect apocalypse uh, takes on a whole new meaning here in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the Oasis of Freedom. My God. Uh, but anyway... The little dog and I are thrilled to say we have gotten rid of those buildings back on my property. And we are getting ready to cut our ties with the Point Lonesome Swamp in the next few days. So, I am exhausted. The sun is going down. I need to go have a margarita. So, I did not even think I was going to get a chronicle of the collapse in today. But I want to thank uh, alert listener... Lieutenant Kevin. Kevin Shanholzer has done my job for me, and uh, he didn't have to go any farther than CNBC for today's Chronicle of the Collapse. I think we hear the word Stark twice in this story about the UN, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. I really don't know anything about the history of Antonio Guterres. I have no, I, I, I mean, I know nothing about the man. Where he came from, I'm assuming, like everybody else in the United Nations, he has a long history of, I don't know, something to do with planet eating. Uh, I'm taking a wild guess. He's either directly, directly planet eating, or he's some sort of economist or whatever. I have no idea how they find these guys, how anybody becomes the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. And uh, But anyway, whoever this guy is, uh, you know, at least the words coming out of his mouth, uh, I guess he's... Uh, <laughs> He's not a clueless moron. I don't know what he is. Uh, he's not a clueless moron, but something tells me uh, he's probably got some reptilian uh, blood-drinking lizard people somewhere in his lineage. But anyway, this is from CNBC. Those little lefties over at CNBC from there, I guess they have a, a whole desk now called the Sustainable Future Desk. The mainstream, the little lefty mainstream media uh, with the little peacock on it actually having an entire news desk called Sustainable Future. Uh, the, the twisted, sick irony, but anyway, from CNBC's Sustainable Future Desk, we have a doubly stark report from, uh, this little mystery man, Antonio Guterres, who is calling coal a stupid investment and is saying we are sleepwalking to climate catastrophe. Yes, says UN Chief Guterres. All right, the UN Secretary General issued a stark warning. A stark warning. Wow, imagine a stark warning from the United Nations just yesterday on Monday saying our planet had emerged from last year's COP26 summit in Glasgow with, quote, a certain naive optimism. A certain naive optimism. I, I wonder how many times his speechwriters 
to come up with a certain naive optimism. What, what did that start with? You know, when they first, his little handlers, his little speechwriter handlers, whoever really said this, how many times and, and, and were they uh, rolling on the floor laughing or, 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 or what to come up with the term a certain naive optimism? Isn't naive somehow implicitly an antonym of certain? Anyway, but more importantly, he said, our planet is, quote, sleepwalking to climate catastrophe. I don't see it. It looks to me like we are uh, wide awake walking into climate catastrophe. Okay, I, I love this. In remarks delivered to the Economist Sustainability Week, <laughs> the Economist Sustainability Week, there you go, that's kind of like the Sancho Panza Chipmunk uh, Prevention, uh, Chipmunk Preservation Week, you know, yes, the, the Economist Sustainability Week. Antonio Guterres sketched out a picture of where he felt the world stood when it came to tackling global warming. Yes. He noted that while COP26 had seen positive developments related to issues such as cutting methane emissions, tackling deforestation, and mobilizing private finance, significant challenges remain. So I guess uh, positive de developments, cutting methane and tackling deforestation. Yes. Uh, what did we read that Amazon deforestation last month was at its highest since at least 2008? That Amazon deforestation has gone through the roof, but Antonio Guterres noting that we have seen positive developments related to tackling deforestation. I'm pretty sure methane emissions are at their highest in uh, human history. Okay, <clears throat> quoting Guterres, keeping 1.5 degree alive requires a 45% reduction in global emissions by 2030. Well, actually, Antonio, I got some bad news for you. Keeping 1.5 alive required a 100% reduction in global emissions by 1970. Okay. I hate to... Uh, I hate to correct, you know, uh, this, this, this little planet eater talking about the positive developments towards tackling deforestation, claiming keeping one and a half uh, blah blah uh, alive requires a 45 percent reduction in global emissions by 2030 and carbon neutrality by mid-century. <clears throat> that problem was not solved in Glasgow. In fact, the problem is getting worse. Hmm. Guterres, this is for the people living under a rock. Uh, Guterres's reference to one and a half relates to the Paris Agreement's target of limiting global warming to well below two, preferably to one and a half degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. The Paris Agreement was reached at the COP21 climate change summit in 2015. More than six years on, it would appear that a huge amount of work still needs to be done. Quoting the Secretary General, quote, according to present national commitments, global emissions are set to increase 
by almost 14% in the 2020s. Last year alone, global energy-related CO2 emissions grew by 6% to their highest levels in history. Coal emissions have surged to record highs. We are sleepwalking to climate catastrophe. Close quote. On Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the wide-ranging effects this could have, Guterres offered up an equally stark assessment. He said that, quote, the fallout from Russia's war in Ukraine risks upending global food and energy markets with major implications for the global climate agenda. As major economies pursue an all-of-the-above strategy to replace Russian fossil fuels, short-term measures might create long-term fossil fuel dependence. And it could happen, guys. And close the window. Close the window to one and a half degrees. Countries could become so consumed by their immediate fossil fuel supply gap that they neglect or kneecap, I love that, kneecap policies to cut fossil fuel use. And this is madness! Addiction to fossil fuels is mutually assured destruction, close quote. But of course, what he failed to point out was getting off of fossil fuels is mutually assured destruction. Do you understand this? Anthony, I need to explain something to you, brother. Staying on fossil fuels is mutually assured destruction. Getting off fossil fuels and going into the clean, green, sustainable future economy is mutually assured destruction. I hate to tell you, Antonio, sorry. Okay. Guterres' comments come at a time when several major economies, including the European Union, are trying to find ways to reduce their reliance on Russian hydrocarbons. Yeah, like finding hydrocarbons everywhere else in the planet. Last week, the International Energy Agency said speed limits on highways should be cut by 10 kilometers per hour to help lower oil demand. Yes, that recommendation was part of a wider 10-point plan published by the Paris-based organization. Yes, we are going to lower speed limits by 10 kilometers per hour, which is 6.2 miles an hour to save the planet. That is really going to save the planet. Okay. In his speech yesterday, Guterres also said that, quote, those in the private sector still financing coal must be held to account. Their support for coal not only could cost the world its climate goals, it's a stupid investment, leading to billions in stranded assets. Yes, it is time to end fossil fuel subsidies and stop the expansion of oil and gas exploration. But even the most ambitious action will not erase the fact that the situation is already bad. In many cases and many places, it is irreversibly bad. Yes, close quote. 
coal has a substantial effect on the environment and the U.S. Energy Information Administration lists a range of emissions from coal combustion. These include carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, particulates, and nitrogen oxides. Greenpeace has described coal as, quote, the dirtiest, most polluting way of producing energy, close quote. And I'm not going to get into this whole debate over uh, if we suddenly stop burning coal, that the, if we keep burning coal, the uh, temperature is going to go through the roof. If we stop burning coal, uh, the temperature is going to go through the roof. This is a debate. Uh, you know, this is the person we don't talk about on this channel on one side of the, de the debate. And then we have my interview with uh, <clears throat> atmospheric physicist Tim Garrett, who is who the guy we don't talk about on this channel loves to quote, you know, about uh, global industrial civilization being a heat engine. Well, the guy who said that quote, Tim Garrett, uh, told me as you know, you know, he's just an he just has a doctorate in atmospheric physics as opposed to a doctorate in bighorn sheep management. So on this hand, we, we have a someone with a doctorate in bighorn sheep management saying we're doomed if we stop burning coal, that the uh, temperature is going to go through the roof, and we have a doctorate in atmospheric physics who has spent his entire life uh, looking at atmospheric physics instead of bighorn sheep management, telling me it's a joke, uh, it's not going to make a damn bit of difference, uh, it, it's going to be so negligible, there's not even going to be any statistical margin. My vote is with Tim Garrett, okay? If I have to, you know, maybe just, I don't know, uh, maybe it's just by journalism training, when I have to look at source credibility on an issue about atmospheric physics, and I have someone with a doctorate in bighorn sheep management telling me his view of atmospheric physics, and someone with a doctorate in atmospheric physics telling me about atmospheric physics, I'm going to go with the doctorate in atmospheric physics. But anyway, I'm getting off course. Alright, where were we? Guterres's speech points to the huge task facing governments around the world who say they want to reduce their reliance on fossil fuels and prevent the worst effects of climate change. Despite the existence of such goals, however, fossil fuels still play a huge role in the world's energy mix and companies continue to discover and develop new oil and gas fields. On the aim of keeping one and a half alive, Guterres laid out a broad vision, yes, a broad vision for how this could be achieved. We have the fireworks starting and it's not even dark yet. All right. Alongside what he calls a rapid, just, and sustainable energy transition, close quote, the phase out of coal and all other fossil fuels needs to be sped up. He said, other tools, we got tools in the toolkit, other tools in the toolkit included focusing on adaptation, strengthening national climate plans annually, and accelerating the decarbonization of sectors like cement, steel, aviation, and shipping. I did not realize there was any shipping still going on, on the, in the planet. In addition, 
the most vulnerable require protection. Yes, the most vulnerable require you know, the, the little brown people. Don't forget the little brown people. Required protection and climate finance needed to be increased. Quote, that is how we will move the one and a half degree goal from life support to recovery room. Yes, yes, that is how we're going to move the goal, the impossible dream from life support to the recovery room, throw more money at the little brown people. All right, if you enjoyed that story, how about reduce speed limits and car-free Sundays? The IEA has a 10-point plan to save the planet. Are electric cars green? It's complicated. Yes, well, I guess if you paint an electric car green, it's green. How about... Shell's board of directors sued for failing to properly prepare <laughs> for the energy transition. Yes, uh, <laughs> good luck on that lawsuit. Anyway, guys, I am exhausted in uh, all of these stark reports from uh, Antonio Guterres. Anyway, I guess I'm going to celebrate the energy transition by starting to pack it up here in the uh, Point Lonesome Swamp, and I'm heading to Texas. Heading to Texas. Uh, I highly suggest you get out there and head to Texas while you still can. I think it got blown away. Did Texas get blown away in a tornado last night? Anyway, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, guys. And we all know why. Bye, guys.